Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at how to move a virtual machine from one virtual mach machine manager, such as VirtualBox, to Proxmox. Right after this. <laughs> So today what I want to do is actually take a look at one of the virtual machines I have installed on VirtualBox. And in this particular one, we're looking for the size of the hard drive first because we need to really know that in order to move one hard drive over to another. And it needs to be at least as big, but I always try to make it just a little bit bigger. According to their documentation, they recommend go one gigabit, one gigabyte. Uh, past the size. So today we'll go to 34 uh, and just to make sure that everything is good. So let's bring it up, make sure that it's working okay before we start the move. Always a good idea. Make sure that the virtual machine is running okay before you try to move it. So that's what we're going to do is just verify. So I'll log in here. And yes, you can see definitely it is working. This is Debian 11. This is the server version. And this is just a test install that I did just for today. Um, it's taking about 70-ish mm, um, megabyte of memory. So pretty lightweight. Not much going on with this anyway. Again, it's just a test image that I'm going to throw away. All right. So I'm going to go over here to root and go ahead and shut this down. We're good. All right, so next thing we need to do, we need to go and check and see what we have in our CD-ROM, and it's blank right now. But before we do that, let's go over and, and actually download the CloneZilla ISO file. And <laughs> I always laugh at this site. <clears throat> it's kind of a throwback to the 90s, but that's okay. It's open source and it works. It works very well. So I will go to the download tab here and yes, there are a ton of ads. And so we'll have to get around those. Yeah, we'll just clip this out of the way and it should take me to the site. So here you have your choice. You can go for the stable release, which is based on Debian. You can also choose the testing release or you can choose the alternative stable, which is, so you have your choice. Do you want CloneZilla under Ubuntu or do you want it under Debian? And so, yeah, we're going to, I picked Debian for today. Of course, I'm moving Debian, so it only makes sense to use the version of CloneZilla that's Debian. And that's all I need from that. I've already downloaded this. So I'll go here and I will click on, this has already been done once already, so it's in my recents. And then we'll start it up. And yeah, I'm going to switch so that you can see this. Make it a little bit bigger. Man, it's been a long time since I've used VirtualBox. But so here's CloneZilla, and we'll just go ahead and hit enter and go in at the VGA 800 by 600. It'll take a moment to come up. Just ignore the errors. They're, they don't mean nothing. Not at this stage, anyway. So I'll, it gives me a choice as to what language I want to use. Pick English. Keyboard, US, English. And then it asked me to start CloneZilla. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then I have a number of choices here. The first one is disk to image. And so this is actually taking your disk drive and converting it to an ISO. And to do that one, you need to have an FTP, uh, excuse me, a, an a, a, a NFS server or a Samba server in order to, to locate. There's a number of other options as well. This one, it allows you to move just the partition. So I can choose what partition I want to I want to clone and do just that. Or I can take an entire hard drive and move it as well. But you need to have a duplicate hard drive on the machine. The remote source is what I'm going to be using today. And this is the source of the Debian release that I am going to move. And then there's also source uh, destination, which will be where I want to move it to. And then there's light server and light client. You can use those if you want. I don't know that much about them. I've never used those two before, but I assume it just allows you to send commands back and forth from the client to the server and then move stuff as you as you need to if you're doing like bulk and so forth. This can do like up to, I don't know, 40 at a time or some ridiculous 
amount of clones, but uh, yeah, I'm only going to do one today. So yeah, I'm going to pick the source and then uh, this has been known to happen. So you notice this is kind of stuck here. Clonezilla does this a lot, so don't worry about it. I'm just going to, um, I don't know, let see if it actually moves. I don't think it's going to, and I'll control C out of it. And let me just go back and check it. I didn't screw something up. No. Nope. Okay, so yeah, it's it should bounce out of here, and it did. Just rerun it and go back into Clonezilla, go back to this, and then it should work. And this happens all the time, like I said. So at this point, we're we're gonna we're gonna need to uh, do a remote a remote disk. I don't want a partition. I want the whole drive. And then we'll have to assign some kind of IP address. I'm just gonna use DHCP for this today. And it's confirming, or is this the drive you want me to clone? And yes, it is. And then it gives me some choices as to what to do to check it. So I'm just going to leave it on the default. Same thing here, what to do when it's finished. You can have it reboot, power off, go to the command shell, or just have it ask you. I'm just going to let it ask me. So it's going to stop here. This is a command you can rerun if you want to. Uh, be able to come back in here and rerun this exact same clone. Say you're moving this to and maybe a couple of different uh, uh, Proxmox servers. But anyway, I can, there's better ways to do it once you get there. So I don't need to do that. So I'm just waiting for it to go through all of its checks. Eventually, it'll say waiting for the target machine to connect. Now, up above, there is the IP address here. And so we'll have to pay attention to that. Now, I'll go back over to Proxmox. And I have set up a test Debian install. This is just a blank one. Doesn't have anything in it. Doesn't need anything in it. Uh, and then um, I'll set it up so that my drive sizes are 34 gig. And then I'll add, in this case, I actually am going to bump the uh, number of, of amount of memory up from 2 gig to 4 but uh, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. And then I'm, I'll add my Clonezilla, which you can see is already done. So uh, we'll just double check it. Yep, it's fine. It's not, yeah, so we'll close that out. It's good. Next thing you probably want to do is check your boot order. Make sure that uh, the CD-ROM is first. Otherwise, if you have an install here already, it's going to boot you into the install instead of Clonezilla. So we want Clonezilla. So I'm going to go ahead and start it, and then I'm going to wait. I'm going to pause for a moment to wait for that to come up. And it's good. And so we'll start it up, and you can see. Let me blow that up for you a bit. We'll put the scaling on. And drag it out a bit. There you go. Now you can see what I'm doing. So, yeah, same thing. Go into the live VGA 800 by 600. It's going to ask you the same questions eventually. Once it boots up, this will take a little bit longer over here because the machine is doing other things besides Clonezilla. So, yeah. All right. So you, uh, we want English. We want U.S. keyboard. And we'll start Clonezilla. And this time we want the destination, remote destination for this side because this is the receiving side. And then, again, we'll choose DHCP for this server. And it needs to know where to connect. So uh, if you need to recheck that, I'm going across a network here. So I'm going between two different networks just to see if this works between networks. And I think it will. So yeah, it's 5.112 and that's what I need. So I'll go ahead and put that in here. can type yeah there we go and then i'll choose the whole disk again it gives you the chance to partition just to take a partition it's verifying do you want to destroy this drive on your virtual machine and yes i do i don't care about it so now it's going to make sure there's nothing on it so it's going to go through some verification checks and then it's going to say are you sure you want to destroy this are you absolutely sure you want to destroy this and yes yes i do <laughs> so and if you destroyed something you didn't intend to, well, it's not like it didn't warn you. And then it's cleaning off because there, I have done this, this before, and now it starts to copy. It will only copy the data 
but it will need to have the same size drive. I mean, I, I believe it will fail if the drive is not is the same size or larger. But if you make it too big, it's not gonna it's not gonna expand it. You'll have to do normal partition management in order to expand the partition into a larger set if you need to do that. So Clonezilla won't do that for you. All right, so now it's connecting, verified, check around, and now it's read the partition table and information from the other side. You'll notice that on the background there, it is not actually, it's, it's done. So what it was doing there was it was verifying and then establishing the grub. And so now I can just power this off. I'm done with the destination side. And we'll go back to the virtual, the virtual box machine and do the same here. We don't need it either. And then it'll ask you to hit enter and then I'll hit enter on both. And that should shut everything down nice and clean. Next thing I want to do is go back in here where I have my, uh, yeah, let's make sure it's down. We don't want it up. And then we'll go over here and and the reason why I say that is because if you are using static IP addresses, you will knock both machines down. So anyway, I'll go ahead and, and turn off the Clonezilla and the CD-ROM. We'll just make it a normal device, and then we'll restart, and hopefully we will see Debian. And there it is. And I'm, trying, I'm going to try to boot into it. And if all things went well, we should be greeted with a prompt, and we should be good to go. Now, I did try this on GNOME. I did try this with a GUI and it failed. I did not check the logs, but I did get a message that said something horrible has gone wrong. So not quite sure what's going on there. It could have been the fact that maybe it, it was trying to, the other machine was still up and the Mac addresses were colliding. Uh, yeah, Linux servers generally don't like that too much. And so, but anyway, um, I'll diagnose that later. But as far as uh, doing just the text only mode, it seems to work just fine. I do have one problem that I do need to fix here though. And that is my network, as you can see, is not working. So I need to go, and the reason for that is the device names for the ethernet controller are different between uh, VirtualBox and Proxmox. So I will need to change those in order for it to properly initialize the Ethernet controllers. You may have other devices that you'll need to do that with, um, but definitely we'll need to do the Ethernet if you're moving from one virtual machine to another or a physical machine to a virtual machine, you'll need to do that. So, and oops, <laughs> okay. So let's restart. Uh, I'm doing this just to make sure that there's no services that are relying on the old name of the Ethernet controller. There are other things that use it. So yeah, let's go ahead, start this up. And we should be able to ping, check. Yep, yep, working. I'll check to see if it's able to get to the local network. Yep, it's able to do that too. So. I mean, I think I think we're good to go here, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, let's just check, see if we can do an update too. Looks, looks good. I don't think there's anything else I, else I need to do here, so we will stop that for now, and I'll come back up and uh, and give you my final thoughts here. So we've gone through um, Clonezilla, and what we what we did was we had a virtual machine that can be a that can be a hard a hard drive as well on a bare metal server. The thing to remember is though is if your bare metal server is sitting on a hard drive that is ever or five terabytes or one terabyte, whatever it might be, you're going to have to have the same amount of room for that on the other machine, even though it doesn't use it. And then of course you can use your partition management tools to shrink it down to a, uh, you know, to a reasonable size, but you will need that amount of storage in order to move it. Even though it's not going to copy it, it, I believe it will fail if that is not the case. So 
just be aware of that. And finally, we we did the uh, we did a remote destination, going moving from uh, VirtualBox over to Proxmox, and then and you can easily do it the opposite way as well. You just reverse which way you want the direction to go. So that's all I had today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video on Clonezilla. Uh, I have used this in the past. The Proxmox, of course, doesn't handle OVA files. So if you want to move virtual machines from physical hardware or you want to move them from virtual uh, machines that are not the same as Proxmox, it's probably the easiest way to do it that I can think of. Let me know in the comments below what methods that you use. I'm always interested in what you guys think. I uh, hope to see you all again real soon. And uh, please like and subscribe and bye for now.